In this video, I am going to show you five techniques that will enhance your animations. These are elements that you can add to your own project to make them even better, to make your edits look clean and professional. By the end of this video, I promise you'll have learned something new and improved as a video editor. On top of that, with each element, I am going to show you examples of them being used in real videos by other creators, including mine and what I've done with my clients. This way, you'll see how you can apply them in real videos. I don't want to waste any more of your time, so let's get straight into it. The first skill you're going to learn is this amazing flow reflection that I've done a couple times for AI Guy, and you can also see it in the last video for Digital Income Project. It's an extra detail that makes the animation so much better. And the best part, it's very easy to do, so let me show you how. First, go down and download the texture pack that I left in the description. It's a Google Drive with a few different textures, and you'll need this for the reflection. All right, once you're in After Effects, just grab any image. You can use a shape or even a text layer. Just have something so we can make its reflection. I'm just going to use my own thumbnail here for this example and when you import it just check this box to make it 3d now the first thing you're going to do is drop one of the textures that i gave you in the timeline make it 3d and change the x rotation value to negative 90. this will flip it over like this and now you just want to drag it down next apply the motion tile effect and just change the output width and output height to like around 400. depending on your texture you might need to check this box mirror edges now create a null, make it 3D, and parent the layer to the texture. To do this, hold shift, click and grab this pick whip tool, and just drag your mouse to the texture layer. Now pre-compose the texture layer and make sure the second box is checked, and click OK. Next, create a new adjustment layer. Anything that you place under this adjustment layer will have the floor reflection, once we add the effects of course. So you can just rename this to something like floor reflection under, or blur under this layer. Then add the effect compound blur. Set the blur layer to your texture. You can leave the value at 20 or mess around with it, but I'll just keep mine at 25. Also, make sure to hide your texture layer. Now simply duplicate the layer you have, in my case, the thumbnail, and move it under the adjustment layer. Then, to make it even more realistic, right click and go to transform and click flip vertical. Now, if I just drag this down, you'll see that we just created this nice, realistic, super high quality reflection, but we are not done. With a very simple effect, we can make this scene look extremely high quality and add that premium touch. Create a new adjustment layer and apply the deep glow effect and change the value to 0.15. If you don't have this effect, check the description of this video. Finally, there's one last thing which is optional, but I like to create a mask just cutting the edges slightly of the image and then going to mask feather so you can double press M on your keyboard to open it up and just changing it to something around 15 or 25. This just adds a blur to the edges and some shadows. And then I'll just copy this mask over to the other layer and boom, you now know how to make a flow reflection. I'm going to show you how you can transform regular boring shapes into something like this. And what you are seeing now is an example from the last Iman Godzi event before he took it down. And also one I did for a recent client. So once you're in After Effects, create a new composition. And what you're first going to do, and this is really important, is create a bunch of random shapes like I am doing, all with a different shade of white and gray. So create a shape, then change the color slightly and create another one. And you can just make triangles like I'm doing. And then do this until you have like 11 shapes. I mean, you can create more if you want, but 11 works. Now I'm just going to fast forward it slightly. Once you do that and you have something similar to mine, I will make each shape 3D and move them around so they aren't all so close together in the middle. Basically, I want a little bit of space between them. However, not too much, just enough so it's not all clustered in the middle. Once you have something like this, create a new null object and parent each shape to the null. Make the null 3D, click R on your keyboard to open up the rotational values. Then, while holding Alt on your keyboard, click the stopwatch for the Z rotation. This will open up the expressions tab, and here I want you to write time asterisk 50. This will make the shapes move around randomly. Now, the higher you put this value, the faster it's gonna move. So you can go 100, 150, and later I actually ended up changing it to 100 because I felt it was too slow. I also recommend changing the scale value of the null object to 150 so it just fits more like the entire screen. Next, create an adjustment layer, add fast box blur, and change the value to something like 80. Finally, pre-compose everything. Then grab your ellipse tool and create a circle mask. I'm also just going to align this directly in the middle using the align tools here. If you don't see this, go to the window tab at the top and click align and it should appear. Now on the pre-comp, right click, go to layer styles and add both inner glow and outer glow. For the outer glow, change the opacity to a value between 25 to 35%. For the inner glow, change the blend mode to normal, turn the opacity to 100%, and increase the size to anywhere between 50 to 70. I found 60 to be a nice spot. 
Now, for the colors, you're going to notice that it looks off, and that's because we will need to change the color of the inner and outer glow. However, first, I need to show you how you will change the color of this gradient circle we just created. Go back into the pre-comp and create a new adjustment layer above everything, and then add the hue slash saturation effect. Check the colorize button, and now when you move this value, the colors will change. So for this example, I am going to go with a blue shade. So somewhere around 204 worked pretty well. Then I will go back to our main composition and change the color of the inner and outer glow to a shade of blue. You can go with light or dark, honestly, it just depends on the look you're going for. You can keep playing around with this until you're satisfied, but just make sure that both the inner glow and outer glow are the same shade of color. And just like that, you have an animated gradient shape. However, we are not done. We can make this look so much better with just a few tweaks. Add the noise effect onto the pre-comp and change the value to around 11% and make sure to uncheck to use color noise. Then, create a new adjustment layer, add deep glow and reduce the value to 0.25 and make sure you check this box. Already, it's looking much better. Now, if you want to see how this can be used, let's try to do what Iman Godzi did and write some text. Just change the blending mode to overlay, reduce the size, place it in the middle and you'll have something like this. So as the gradient moves, the object, or in this case the text inside, also becomes darker and brighter which looks really nice. To make it even better, I can add a deep glow to the text and reduce the value. I can also create a new adjustment layer and add this quick chromatic aberration which is just another free plugin you can download and I'll again I'll just leave it in the description and when you zoom in it just adds a little RGB distortion to the edges of the shape and the text which I just think looks great. So before you had this looking all average and basic to something like this which is a million times better. Next on the list, we have a more advanced skill which will separate you from most editors if you learn this. And you can see any Wealth's video editor actually pulled this off in a real edit, which just looks amazing. Here it is with sound turned on. $2,000 for one sponsored segment, as for six grand for three segments across three. Now, this one is a little more difficult, so you need to focus. <gasps> Actually, I lied, it's, it's pretty easy. First, all you need to do is create your rectangular shape, so just start with that. You need to create three shapes, and I'm going to be following any wealth's animation as an example, so I just created the main long shape, and then you want to create two smaller ones. Now, another thing that's really important is that when we add the effects that will make the liquid morphing animation, it actually ends up shrinking our shape sizes a little bit. Just increase the size because it's not gonna be the same size that you're currently seeing right now. And then use the align tool to make everything centered and perfectly spaced out. Next, I will keyframe position. So for this example, I'm going to move the two smaller shapes behind our main one since they are supposed to like come out from the sides so just follow what i'm doing here i'm gonna go a little bit forward say 1.5 seconds and create new keyframes then i will go to the beginning of my timeline and move them in like so once you do that i want you to grab all the keyframes press f9 on your keyboard to easy ease and then you're gonna go to the graph editor. Now, all you gotta do here is just copy my graph. You want to push the keyframes into the middle like this. So basically it's gonna start slow, it's gonna speed up in the middle, and then it's gonna slow down again. And it's gonna give us like a very like nice smooth animation. Now, obviously, if you feel like it's too slow or it's too quick, like you can always keep playing around with the keyframes, like moving them closer or further, messing around with the graph. Honestly, it's just up to you. Now, create an adjustment layer and apply the Gaussian Blur Legacy effect. Change the value to 30. And then after you do that, apply the simple choker effect and also change the value to 30. As you can see, our shape became smaller, which is why I told you to scale it up earlier. If you feel like it's too small, you can just scale them up again and fix its positioning, no big deal. And honestly, you pretty much did it. I mean, if we watch it, the other two shapes look like they are coming out of the first one in this liquid motion, which is really what I wanted to teach you. But there's a few more things that I have to explain to you because it will be a problem if you don't know it. If you look at the first shape, it shrinks from the sides at the same time these shapes come in closer. Now you might be thinking, oh, just unlink the scale property and reduce the X value. However, when I did this, the edges become distorted. It's no longer rounded like it was originally. So to fix this, instead of messing with the scale property, you will go and change the rectangle path. So open up the shape, contents, rectangle, rectangle path, and size. Now unlink this one, and when you change the values, you'll see that the edges are not affected allowing you to manipulate this in any way you desire. Now this next step, and this is the final step, is very important because you're going to notice that you can't add any other layer without ruining the animation. For example, if I add a white solid, well, everything is blurry and there's this weird black stroke around it. So in order to add effects like job shadow, text, backgrounds, and pretty much any element, you know, like the init wealth animation, what you're gonna need to do is pre-compose all the shape layers with the adjustment layer. And when you do that, 
the problem is officially solved. Now, let's say you want to add a stroke. Simply duplicate the pre-comp, go to layer styles and select stroke. Now I'm going to make it white, but obviously it's not visible. So what I'm gonna do is add a drop shadow to the bottom layer and mess around with the settings a little bit until I get something nice. And then obviously the plain white background doesn't look really good. So what you can do is create a new adjustment layer and apply CC vignette. Another thing you could do is go into the pre-comp and add a noise effect to the adjustment layer. And then you could also add a gradient ramp to each shape and just keep adding those extra details, you know, to make everything look a lot better and clean. But at the end of the day, that was not the point of this tutorial. It was just to show you how to make that morphing liquid animation. And now you know how. However, I will leave the project file for this recreation that I did of the NA Wealth animation in case you want to just see how everything was made. The fourth on our list are these reflective glass style shapes, which again, Innate Wealth uses in the video I showed you before. And this one is super easy and won't take me long to teach you, probably just a minute. So let me just get started. All you need to do is first just create a shape layer. It doesn't really matter the size, just create any shape like mine and then apply the fast box blur. Change the value to 30 and iteration to 8, then click this button right here to make the shape an adjustment layer. Basically what this does is it literally make the shape layer act like an adjustment layer. So anything you apply on this affects all the layers below it. Now duplicate it, uncheck the adjustment layer button, remove the blur, remove the fill, and simply add a stroke. And you did it. It's honestly that simple. Obviously you can mess around with the settings to make it look slightly different. You can add a gradient ramp or CC light sweep onto your stroke, you know, all those extra stuff, all these extra effects, you know, for the extra details, but that's pretty much it. That's how you make the reflective glass shape that you saw Inewell did in his intro. And the final skill you will learn is this pixelated holographic effect, something that's honestly one of my favorites since I can just reuse it and it works on pretty much anything. For example, you can apply this on any image. Maybe you mentioned someone in a video, you want to show them on the screen in a cool way. You can apply this on logos and pretty much anything to make it look digital. For example, look at this dollar bill. This is how it looked like before and then this is how it looked like after I applied the effects. Additionally, it has this wiggle animation. So if you have still images, this is a great way to bring motion or life to them. On top of that, I'll also show you how you can turn this into a preset within After Effects, so you can apply just like any other effect in the software. So you basically, you just have to do this once and you're done. To start, drag any image. I'm going to use Iman God's ZPNG. And basically, all you need to do is drag these three effects onto your layer. Venetian Blinds, Turbulent Displace, and Drop Shadow. For the Venetian Blinds, change Transition Completion to 45% and width to 7, and the direction to 90 degrees. Now this is what you'll mainly be changing when you apply this preset, because depending on the image you have, sometimes you'll need to play around with these two values that I've highlighted to get the look we want. I'll show you what I mean in just a minute. For Turbulent Displace, make sure Displacement is set to Horizontal Displacement. Change amount to 9 and the size to 11. Next, open up the Evolution Options tab. Alt-click, so hold Alt on your keyboard and click the stopwatch for Random Seed, which will open up the Expression tab. And here, write Time, asterisk 6. Also, change the Offset Turbulence value to 960 and 540. Finally, for our last effect, the Drop Shadow, make it white, reduce the opacity to something around 35-40%, to 40%, and increase the softness to 370. To finish this off, if you are going to use this effect, you must use a Deep Glow, so create a new Adjustment layer, apply the Deep Glow, and reduce the value to something around 0.6. And obviously feel free to mess around with the others. Like I changed this to 150 or 200. Like you can mess around to get the desired look you want, but you must use a deep glow. Now, in order to reuse this, you don't have to keep, you know, adding these effects over and over again. Select all of them by holding shift, then going up to the animation window and clicking save animation preset, and then rename it to something like holographic effect. Go to your effects and presets panel, right click and click refresh list. Then search for your preset and it should be there. If you don't see it, just try restarting after effects. Now you should be able to make all these techniques shown on the screen right now. If you want to learn how to edit more complex animations like Iman Godzi, then click this video on the screen right now. If you did find this video useful, please consider subscribing. And if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to respond.